Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com. We got some score football back on the menu. Four box random division break number four, which is uh, which is from a fresh case. The next division break in the store right now. All card ship. And big thanks to this group. And we did it straight up too. We sold out the division straight up. Big thanks to that group. And thanks to the divisions right there. Let's roll it, randomize it. One and a two, three times for names and divisions. One, two, and three. Easy. Got Chris C down to Chris M. And one and two, three times for the divisions. One, two, and three. NFC North down to the NFC South. All right, Chris Corwin with the NFC North. Karen with the AFC East, Peter with the NFC West, Barry with the AFC North, Matthew with the AFC West, Matt Buckler with the NFC East, Matthew S with the AFC South, Chris M, NFC South. And let's uh, alphabetize that by division. And we're gonna pause the video and see if there's any division trades. And then when we come back, we'll also have the break. So stick around, BRB. All right. Hi, welcome back everybody. No deals are done, so this list right here remains the same, that division break. So TWC trade window closed. Four boxes from a fresh case. So let's, uh, let's pop this giant case open. It's sort of an awkward shape and kind of heavy too. Let's see which four boxes we're gonna do. We're just having a little conversation. At the trade window, we were like, we got one of our guys in the chat, Brandon Richards. His dad is a Patriots fan. And his dad was floating the idea, which is interesting, of of uh, maybe trading Mac Jones for a receiver. Which is kind of interesting. But how many teams with a good receiver that the Patriots need would be willing, would, oh, who also need a quarterback. Actually, and yeah, and how long is Mac Jones out? I mean, if they really want to make the change to Bailey Zappi, which would kind of be incredible. Uh, don't the Carolina Panthers, they could use a quarterback. And could they give up Christian McCaffrey? I mean, I don't know if it'd be a one-for-one one sort of deal, but Christian McCaffrey can catch the ball. All right, so there's, uh, wait, we're doing a four-box break, right? So let me create an extra stack of four. Let me just shave, let me just add one to each stack from this side here. All right, so there's three stacks of four. So break four will be one of these stacks. Break five will be the second, third, and break six will be the last stack right here. So with the die, we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. It's one, so we'll go left side right there. And so these we will save for next time. And we'll put a X across Matthew Stafford's number. I don't know if there's any case hits or anything like that, but just so you know, they're from the same case. And I may just grab four random boxes next time. All right, so here's the list once again. Maybe a Seattle for Lockett and then Mac Jones and kind of marinate behind Geno a little bit and see what they can do there. I mean, that's a possibility. I feel like trades of that caliber, of that magnitude, simply just don't happen in the NFL. But that could be interesting. 
I mean, that Patriot team knows more about Bailey Zabby than we do, so if they're... Has that been talked about? Or is this just your dad playing GM? Like, is this an idea being floated by people in the New England area? Or maybe they flip Zappy instead. But it would have to go to a team because, like, it's hard for a quarterback mid-season be effective. So it's not like it's not like uh, you know, it's not like Bailey Zappy or Mac Jones is going to go elsewhere and start right away. still taken at least a couple weeks to get a feel for a system unless it's unless they're going to a team with a coordinator that they've worked with before or something like that so that that player that the traded quarterback wouldn't be really worth anything or wouldn't be useful for the regular season they'd be useful for the following season But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, that that could be more of an off-season trade as opposed to as opposed to a this season trade. I can see, you know, Bailey Zappi. How, yeah, how long is Mac Jones out too? So I can see them, you know, getting some tape on Zappi, getting some tape on Mac Jones when he comes back. You know, and then just see how the season plays out, and then they could figure out in the off-season. I don't know if it would happen sort of mid mid season, at least with a quarterback. There's Pierre Strong Jr. to one hundred. That is for Be looking up cards numbered out a hundred. That is for New England. So we'll make sure our shipping team puts those in the right places. Desmond Ritter for the NFC South. That'll be for Chris. Do all cards ship in this? Yeah, all cards ship in this as well. So no, no one has info on when, how long Mac Jones is going to be out. How long is Cam Akers going to be out? I feel like he's on the outs for sure. Oh, there's Pierre Strong Jr. And we got a Trent McDuffie autograph. For the AFC West, that'll be for Matthew Slade. Gilo is a Chiefs fan. Gilo, what's what's Trent McDuffie doing these days? Old corner. There's Chris Johnson to 100. I guess it sort of is a... Drew Bledsoe, Tom Brady. Wait, was Drew, Drew Bledsoe wasn't traded in the middle of the season, though. He just got injured. They started Tom Brady, and then they never looked back. And there's Drew Bledsoe right there. I think that's what happened. And Drew and Tom Brady was taking the job of a of a veteran quarterback. It wasn't wasn't like he was just taking over a won the job over another you know, rookie or second year player or something like that. Oh, Matt Jones just got off the I IR, IL, IR.
I guess we'll have to see what his what his status is throughout the week. See if Bailey Zappi gets another start or if they're ready to roll with. There's Cortland Sutton. Autograph. How many autographs are we looking for per box? It says four per box. Unwrap four autographs per box on average. This will be for the AFC West, Matthew. Trent McDuffie. Oh, you're saying Trent McDuffie just got off the IR. I see, I see. Sorry, I forgot that I asked you. Chiefs fan Gilo about Trent McDuffie. So hopefully we'll see Trent McDuffie in action. Maybe getting some interceptions. That would make Matthew Slade with the AFC West happy. Yeah, and Mac Jones with the high ankle sprain. He could be out for a little while. Got an Austin Hooper to 35 for the Browns, AFC North. It'll be for Barry. So Bailey Zappi, last three games, had 99 yards his first game, thinking that he might have been coming in for uh, Mac Jones at that point, right? Had 188 yards his next game against Detroit, and then had a 309-yard game against Cleveland, beating him 38-15. Interesting. But, as Steve Birch has pointed out, you know, the competition, the opponent's not super challenging. So I think they're, they got three more games and then the bye. There's Mac Jones, speaking of which. There's Bailey Zappi. Three more games and then the bye. They are hosting Chicago on Monday Night Football. So Bailey Zappi, that might be a good time to maybe float some Bailey Zappies out on the secondary market if he has a big game on national television. There's Taylor Heineke. AFC East, that's Karen. Karen's a Patriots fan. She's got the AFC East gathering up those Bailey Zappies. Taylor Heineke for Washington NFC East. That's for Matt Buckler. Versus hosting Chicago on Monday night at New York Jets and then hosting the Colts before their bye week. The Bears have a decent defense, don't they? I mean, I think the Jets would be the big test at Jets. They kind of, they, they sort of, they shut down. Um, you know, guys like him. They, sh they shut down the Packers today. Limited Tom Brady, or Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers to uh, to 10 points, although someone said that, that he was a little banged up. I feel like Colts have a decent defense too. So a bit, bit, bit more challenging. Thurman Thomas to 100, AFC East. There's Ty Freifogel, rookie auto for Dallas. That's NFC East, Matt B.
And that's Kenny Pickett for the AFC North. He was knocked out of the game, but, but had a passing touchdown to Najee Harris, I think. All right. That was the first box. Here's the next box. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Steelers won that game, too. I don't know. It'd be interesting to see what they do. I, I, I would be surprised. When's the trading deadline? The NFL trading deadline usually isn't super spicy. It's like someone picks up a, a safety or a, you know, or an extra cornerback or lineman or something like that. But. I'd be surprised. I'd certainly be surprised if, if a move like that was made in the middle of the season. But I could see this being, you know, Bailey Zappi allows Mac Jones to kind of heal up that ankle as long as possible. And then you get, you get some Bailey Zappi on tape. You have some Mac Jones on tape. This could be a quarterback battle you know next season or they can make a trade in the off season and uh, add a pass catcher to that team You told your dad to pick both New York teams to be in the playoffs. That's a good call there. I mean, it's not surprised that the Giants are 5-1. and one. Let's look at the Giants' schedule really quick. That another that's another Trent McDuffie for the AFC West Matthew starting starting his Trent McDuffie PC whether he intended to or not so Giants face they're at Jacksonville on Sunday this upcoming Sunday next Sunday I guess today Sunday next Sunday and they're at Seattle so they got two road games before they go into a bye. I think unless something goes wrong or unless they're frauds all of a sudden. And I feel like they've been playing some pretty solid football. That's probably two wins, right? So they can go into the bye seven and one. Yeah, Gilo always felt Dan Jones was a good, decent QB, but but now yeah, now he has Saquon that balances out the offense a little bit. Their receivers kind of suck. They them losing. Uh, I'm blanking. Someone's going to tell me in the chat. I hope. But uh, losing one of their pass catchers for uh, for the season did not help. Slayton? Didn't help. You would hope that uh, Kadarius Tony, their second year receiver, 
And here's Carson Wentz, Colts edition, 23 out of 50, AFC South, Matthew. You would think that a talent like Kadarius Tony would really step up, but I don't know if he has. In the Green Bay game, they, they actually put up some yards, but... No, Slayton's health. And who is it? Not Darius Slayton got had six catches, seventy nine yards. Saquon. Yeah, they really don't have a lot of people that can go out there and pass catch, right? I think their defense has improved a lot, though. Daniel Bellinger, Cody's brother. Daniel, I don't think he is. Daniel Bellinger catching, getting passes, getting targets and passes. Sterling Shepard. Uh, yeah, it's not like Sterling Shepard was... I'm not trying to make it like they lost Jerry Rice, but... I feel like that's a pretty solid receiver over some of the guys that they have, so... Although Tony didn't even get targeted today, maybe he's maybe he's injured. Um, I don't know. That's a guy that someone that, and I and who is? Sorry, my brain's not working today. Oh yeah, this guy hasn't really been doing anything. Kenny Galladay, he was like a big free agent pickup a couple years ago, and he hasn't really shown up. So uh, there's a little, some disappointments there. I think maybe they were thinking, hey, we got someone who, someone like Kenny G, and then you have someone like Sterling Shepard, and then you got a youngster like Kadarius Tony. They thought they were building a good receiving core there, but it just hasn't worked out. Well, maybe that's a team that might be looking for, you know, to add a to add a pass catcher. And we got Russell Gage for the AFC, NFC South. Chris M, who are a surprising three and three. They're Jadavion Clowney. And now Clowney's got a bruised shoulder. Everyone remember that coach quote? That's a classic. Maybe you got to rely on guys like Wandale Robinson to step up. Who's the guy from the 80s? Oh, that would be Calvin Ridley, the gambler. You got to know when to hold them, know when to fold them. Here is Deshaun Corbin for the New York Football Giants, NFC East, Matt B. Is he ever coming back? I don't know. I would, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> I, think, uh, I think he sat out, well, the year he was gambling, I think he sat out the year for for personal reasons, which is fine. Nice, Kenneth Walker the third to 50 for the uh, NFC West, Peter. Two more boxes to go. Um, and then he got popped for the gambling thing.
So that's two seasons down. Like, I don't know if he's like working out. I don't I don't know what the latest is, but but I don't know if he's if he's staying in shape or if he's working out or I mean I don't know if there's any Falcons fans listening right now that could shed some light on that. But it is I mean, even if this guy is working out every day, which, who knows? I don't know if he is or not. But even if he's working out every single day, I don't know if he has, it's like, you can't replace, it's hard to replace two years of, of not, two seasons of not being in the NFL. So whether he stays on the Falcons or whether he gets traded or goes elf elsewhere, I mean, it might take him a whole season just to get into to get into shape and NFL shape at that. But I feel like he was a pretty solid, pretty solid receiver. I'm assuming he'll he'll be has he been has he been released? I don't know what his status is, but Well, that was the that was the that was the argument from the get-go, Chilo, that the NFL is making the NFL is partnered up with DraftKings and all this sort of stuff and and yet, you know, Calvin really gets hit with, you know, pretty much with, with a massive punishment. Although the NFL will tell you, you know, the NFL will tell you, hey, you know, you just simply cannot compromise the integrity of a game. You know, if the public feels as if games are not on on the level, you'll lose viewership pretty quickly. So that's what they'll tell you. You can't have players do that. Not even be suspected of doing that. NFC West, Peter Lombardo, making the spokesman. They can make a lot of former NFL guys spokesmen. Plenty of those who would love to, to get an extra paycheck for, uh, there's Malik Willis, AFC South, Matthew S. Get a paycheck from the NFL and DraftKings for being a spokesperson. Which I, I get the point. Wild card points will be randomized to one person in the break, in the division break. If there's any more points, winner take all. Wild part cards can be 100 points, could be a million points. I don't know. It's a wild card. On the NBA, who do you think has a better chance to get over six points? Dray Draymond Green, Kayvon Looney, P.J. Tucker looking at the overs on FanDuel. Um, I'm going to do a randomizer for this at the end, these and all the other similar cards. I, I, I honestly don't know. 
Like how many how many minutes are those guys gonna get on this team? My guess it would be Kayvon Looney, right? There's Alec Pierce for the Colts, AFC South, Matthew. I don't know. Given those options, I would say pass. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even bet any of those I'm over six. Damien Harris for the AFC East. Maybe it'll be maybe it'll be Draymond actually. I could see him coming out against. They're all oh they're all starting. I could go with Draymond. I could see him getting like a a ten point triple double. Right, he ends up with those triple doubles a lot. I could see him getting eleven points, dozen rebounds and. A dozen assists or something like that. One of those Draymond triple doubles. Oh, you pick Kayvon Looney? Not a bad choice, Kayvon Looney. Oh, and a Dante Culpepper autograph. And with all these cards like upside down and right side up and flipped around. A little surprise, Dante Culpepper. NFC North. Chris with the NFC North. And the Kennedy Brooks sets to 20, 5 out of 20 for the NFC East. They're playing against the Lakers. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how they deploy. Um, how they deploy Anthony Davis. I know coaching staff would love to see Anthony Davis play the five because it helps with everyone's spacing. But it's a little more of a physical role, and Anthony Davis not surprisingly, doesn't want to play that, would prefer to play as a four. <laughs> Some other people argue, yes, he should be a four. But then who are the, who are the Lakers starting in the center position? Thomas Bryant, maybe? I don't know, it gets a little tricky there. My guess, and I guess we'll have to see this week when the Lakers open their season against the Warriors. I guess we'll have to see if, um, did they say Damian Jones? Yeah, I was gonna say, I have a feeling that, they'll, that, their, that their lineup for the first three quarters, maybe three and a half quarters, will be Damian Jones at center. And then the closing lineup, if they're within winning distance, the closing lineup, I, I would imagine, would be Anthony Davis at center for the last half of the fourth quarter.
All right, fourth and final box. Next division break in the store. are quite thick and I feel like they put an extra, extra adhesive on these. They're definitely secure and difficult to open. Yeah, I think so too, Gio. I think score is a pretty good value. I, th I think most most years, score is a pretty good value. What's the Broncos again? Monday Night Football: Broncos at Chargers. Who does everyone have in this game? Chargers. It's tomorrow night. We'll be watching the game here together. Uh. Who, who does everyone have in that game? It's here in SoFi. Do I have to get to work a little bit earlier? No. Maybe? I'll have to, I'll have to monitor traffic tomorrow. 5.15 start. Will be traffic coming down here, I guess? Probably. If I have to get here two hours before a game, I might have to, might have to get, out of, get out of the house a little bit earlier. We should not have to worry about that. And that's a four out of six, Odafi Owe. Nice low number there for the AFC North, Barry. Man, that's... I'm sure schedule makers had, a, had like Russell Wilson. Versus Justin Herbert, all in mind. That's going to be a great primetime matchup. Blah 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 blah. AFC West is stacked. They said Russell Wilson would lead the Broncos to the Super Bowl. They said. Kayvon Thibodeau. I feel like had a had a key sack on Lamar Jackson earlier today. He's part of the reason why the Giants are looking good so far this season. NFC East, Matt. And Mike Williams to 100. We'll see him tomorrow. What are the next? What does next week look like? Thursday night Saints at Cardinals. Uh, <laughs> I guess it's kind of fun seeing Kyler Murray slinging around, but. Andy Dalton. I mean, Jameis Winston might be back, but I don't know. Two, two, and four teams. I'm looking for. What about Sunday night football? Steelers at Dolphins Sunday night football? I mean, is, is Kenny Pickett getting the start there? I guess if he's clears concussion protocol. I think Tua has cleared concussion protocol, but no word on if, he, if he's going to play. Next Monday night, Bears at Patriots. I guess the Bailey Zappi show. Some of these primetime games looking kind of... Actually, yeah. Is Hopkins back? Okay, that could be an interesting story. Let's see Don, DeAndre Hopkins coming back. I think I did see some numbers where... where uh, and DeAndre Swift, NFC North, Chris. DC did see some numbers there where, like... 
I don't know what the measure, the statistical measurement was, but Kyler Murray with DeAndre Hopkins, long story short, Kyler Murray with DeAndre Hopkins plays a lot better than Kyler Murray without DeAndre Hopkins. And I guess it's, that makes sense. He's a pretty good wide receiver, but but I think like the drop off was like was like really steep. Which is why it was pointed out in some podcasts that I was listening to. And there's a, an artist proof 19 out of 35 squad card, Green Bay Packers, and FC North, Chris. AFC North getting all the Kenny Pickett that's Barry. Jason is getting froggy on Facebook about Dallas and his Eagles. Froggy? What, what does that mean? Does anyone else speak Rex? Is this a word that people use? Froggy? Like a frog? Like a hippity hop? AFC South will get this uh, Malik Willis. I'll be from Matthew. Brandon saying it was so dumb when the Lakers let go of Julius Randle. Yeah, I mean, Lakers have made so many trades. I don't know, where did, where did Julius Randle go? Although Julius Randle wasn't, I guess he was kind of a double-double machine, but it would have been interesting if Julius Randle and Brandon Ingram and Lonzo Ball and D'Angelo Russell all stayed together just to see what happened. I don't know if that team wins a championship, though. There's Cole Beasley for the Bills, AFC East, Karen. Rhino, yeah, we should be getting impeccable WWE, both in the shop and probably on personal breaks. Yeah, we, we pretty much get 99% of all the releases, if not 100% of all the releases from Tops and Panini. So, Especially if it's something like higher end, like Immaculate. We're definitely getting that. Jumpy? Yeah, like something something in his throat. Jumpy? I don't know if that's the that's the right word. Nobody scored on Dallas more in tonight. Nobody got running tonight. Uh, uh. I don't think that's the right word that you're looking for. Jumpy makes jumpy is to me is is uh is nervous. Ooh, well, he was a little jumpy. Now that must be some that must be some uh, Indiana colloquialism that you guys use. Now you're describing. Now I would describe Jason as being maybe maybe feeling himself a little bit. First off the line, we eventually get first off the lines. It's 5 out of 10 K. Otten uh, for the NFC South. But if first off the line is, uh, is generally something that we don't get until afterwards. We, 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 we used to attempt to get in line and try to buy first off the line and do all that sort of stuff, but... I mean, it's with all the people who are buying first off the line and then, or I don't know if it's like people still have bots buying first off the line, like we never end up getting. So we just wait until it cycles back to distributors and then, and then we'll get them later. Froggy, slang, inclined to fight, aggressive quotation, slang, energetic or strong? Yeah, I'm with you, Gilo. 
I've heard more as like you got a frog in the throat. You're feeling a little froggy, a little, little, little under the weather. But not, not like that. Huh. So, Joe Christian, this must be regional. Because Joe Christian also saying, to me, froggy someone feeling brave or cocky. Hmm. No, that, that, is, that is not in my vocabulary. All right, let's do some randomizers. That randomizing is in my vocabulary. It's got to be regional. We don't say that in Southern California. All right. First of all, uh, let's randomize. So for these three player cards, we're, we're just going to say that's position one, two, and three. And whatever the randomizer lands on, that's where it'll go. Or I'll go left, center, middle. That's, that's a little bit easier. Left, center, right, I mean. And then everyone gets a shot at the wild card points. So one dice roll for both lists. It's going to be six and a two eight times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So that'll be left side cards. We'll get those after eight. Let's see who gets the wild card. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And that'll be Barry. You'll get that. You'll get that wild card card. Who knows how many points that could be? I'm Joe for JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. I call it soda, Gilo. I know pop is regional though. Um, Barry, congrats to you. Thanks everyone for watching. I'm Joe for JaspiesCaseBreaks.com. I'll see you next time for the next uh, divisional break. Bye bye.